Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to go back to some of the questions about the visas. I represent Las Vegas, and so this visa issue is very important to us, not just for visitors, tourists coming, but also for conventions and planning, uh, and conventions have gotten more international all the time, and how to plan or whether you're going to come to a conference or a convention or you're going to be represented at a trade show. So this issue is very important to us. we got 40 million visitors coming to Las Vegas every year. $20 billion in wages, $80 billion in overall economic output. So if, if this falls apart, people are devastated. So uh, I know that there, we mentioned some of the excess wait times. They've gone up and down in India. But other places that have a big impact on us are Brazil and Mexico. Mexico and Canada are a source of our main uh, visitors. So if we can't get from Mexico or from Brazil, it's a, it's a serious problem. So uh, we're talking about ways to help bring down the backlog. I know that President Obama, at his time, issued a, an executive order that 80 percent of all temporary visas would be issued in less than 21 days, and that really worked. It, it brought the a high of 114 days down to just two days in 2012. Now, unfortunately, uh, the last president, uh, Trump, did away with that, and I wonder if there are any plans by the State <laughs> Department or President Biden to, to put that back in place, or if that would be a good idea, or if not, what might work? I know it's a goal, but what are some specifics? Uh, first, I, um, uh, we think about Las Vegas a lot. We know how important tourism is to Las Vegas, and um, we visited many recent travel shows that have been held there, and so we, we really appreciate what your um, uh, the, how important this is to you and to your constituents. Um, as it, again, um, just to go to the um, to the executive order, I think you know the challenges that were were being faced in 2012 are not the challenges that we face in 2022. We are already so productive. We are already processing so many more visas than we did at that time. That what we're uh, what we are looking for is simply more staffing in the field, and we are absolutely getting it out there t as quickly as we possibly can to be able to conduct these visa interviews as quickly as possible. Um, again, for every category that doesn't require um, an interview and for every category that is um, uh, students and others repeat travelers, mm -hmm. our wait times are pre-pandemic or better. And I would also highlight that we have brought wait times for first time visitor visas down. 50% since the beginning of the fiscal year. So we're going to absolutely keep at it. And with your constituents in mind, the other thing I want to highlight is that we do have a business visa unit. If you hear of conventions that are taking place, please let us know. We were, I think, one of the proudest moments I had in this job was when we got um, a thank you tweet from the Consumer Electronics Show, because I think a, a third of the attendees there were international. Um, so again, this is something we think about a lot. Uh, we think about it all the time, and we're excited because, again, more people than ever before are able to travel to the United States right now, and we want to facilitate that and be part of the future. Well, is there anything that we can do as a committee or Congress besides just giving you resources for more staff and equipment, to, uh, for example, the virtual interview process or any way to help along those lines? I, I can tell you... Um, one priority and then two legislative priorities I would love to quickly talk about. Please. One priority is, um, I spoke briefly about this with, when Mr. Kim was talking. We, um, we are fee funded, but we are also part of the State Department. Mm -hmm. So ensuring that the State Department is fully funded and that the, the management platform on which we sit um, is robust and healthy is really important to us to be able to hire, to be able to execute contracts, training, getting people out into the field. So that's really important. And then we do have two legislative authorities that I'd be happy to talk briefly about. One is um, one of the things that um, Congress gave us in the aftermath of the pandemic was expanded spending authorities, which allow us to move fees more flexibly uh, across our global enterprise. Um, we, those authorities are uh, year to year, and we would be um, very grateful if they could be made permanent because some of the things that we want to do, making investments in IT and really hiring to meet this demand, uh, are, 
we need to be able to plan on a more long-term basis than year to year. And then finally, um, there's a passport uh, fee, the passport application and execution fee that we were given authority to collect in 2022 and to expend that year. But in subsequent years, we are allowed to collect it but not expend it. That money can be used as a, as a source to assist American citizens overseas. Um, that if, Right now, we have to move money around and borrow or steal from, from visa money to be able to fund some of the unfunded things that we do overseas, like visiting people in prison, for example, and other things. So given the fact that 46% of Americans now have passports above 30% just 13 years ago, we know those people are going overseas. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we have a dedicated source of funding that we can use to assist them if they're in trouble overseas. And I uh, think I'm out of time. Thank you for letting me get through that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.